Yea, they shall bow about to the Lord and perform it. You're going to use more Paul in picking up out of this letter. A resolution for the new year. You can put a vow for the new year, but resolution always sounds good. Resolution for the new year. Most of you have had your Christmas dinner and got the gifts that you thought you should have gotten. Laid back and relaxed, but now that this season is almost ended, Yeah, you can look to the past, but it is the future that we want to look to. So it is, as we quickly approach these last days of this year, we look back and we all would agree that we have fallen short in some areas of our lives. Not only that, some of us just have missed the mark completely. Yeah, yeah. No, bear with me for a moment. For a year and time that this time that people start to think about their lives. Not only do they think about their lives, uh, they start to think that they can start over again. They can start new with a New Year's resolution. But what good is it to make a resolution if you don't plan on keeping it? It is strange to me that we can make promise to the Lord over and over again and, and we find ourselves when we're in dire straits, when we're down in the pits of, uh, of where we can't see no way out. That we call on the Lord and, and we, we bow to the Lord. We're going to serve you if you just get me out of the pit. All right, all right. How quickly do we forget once we get out of the pit? In our text today, Isaiah writes about a time when Egypt will know the Lord and worship him. You know the Egypt people did not worship the Lord. They worshiped idol gods. And because of that, the Lord has a way to make you worship him. You know, for time and time past, that we'll go along and, and do our own thing. But the Lord has a way to bring you back to reality. That he will call you to worship him and praise him. Even if he has to lay it on, on your back. And all you can do is lay there and look up. Know that God is God all by himself. So it is here in Egypt that their life changes. Because the Lord declares to them that he's going to bring some problems. In their lives. There's no reason why anyone here today should leave here and not know the Lord. Not only would the people in Egypt, people in Egypt worship the Lord, they would make a vow to Him. As I said earlier, not only just to make it, but to keep it. Look at verse 20, if you will, for that's the reason for making and keeping. The Bible. Verse 20 tells us is that it will be for a sign and for a witness to the Lord of hosts. Land of Egypt, for they will cry to the Lord because of the present. Yeah. Well, you know, when you're going through something, you will call on the Lord. Amen. Yeah. And he will send them safe. <laughs> Mighty. And he will deliver them. Don't you know something about Jesus? Mighty Savior is he. You got to understand that we are in the same plight as Egypt. So it is that Isaiah writes 
make it plain that every Christian in here today should have received God's grace and His mercy. Say that before God has been good to all of us, that He's brought us a mighty long way. Time when we were born into this present day. Songwriter said, even though I have had some bad days in my life, uh -huh, the good days outweighed my bad days. I might not be able to witness to that. So I won't complain about my bad days. So it is that we understand that Isaiah wanted us to understand that with that in our mind, we too ought to be willing to make some vows or resolution to God and, and keep them just like the people need to. Some of you may have thought about what you're going to do differently in the upcoming year. Well, let me uh, make some suggestions for you All right. All right. that you can take part in. And you may want to take a few notes because this may help you along the way. Here's an opportunity that you can make a vow to the Lord. Amen? Amen. Now you must understand that God is going to hold you accountable for whatever vow God is not one like you and I that we forget what we say. First of all, for the new year to be to better understand three things about the Bible. So in this upcoming year, you you, you want to vow to better understand at least three things about the Bible. First of all, that you need to understand and to accept the Bible as it is, that it is, it is the inspired word of God. It's not just a book to just ride around in your car. Let it collect dust in your house. First Timothy, excuse me, Second Timothy 3 and 16 tell us that all scripture is given by inspiration of God. And it is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for the instruction in righteousness. That means you need to read the Bible daily. Not only that you read it, but you need to take some meditation time to understand what it is that the Lord would have you to understand. Not only that, but Bible study would help you. Because when there is a question that you can't answer, that, that Bible study is a time that questions are asked. Second thing about the Bible, you can vow to, you need to accept the Bible as your light and your God. Too many times we go on our own and do our own thing. But the word declares in the Bible in Psalms 119, 105, tells us that the word is a lamp unto my feet yeah. and a light unto my pathway. In other words, that even though it may be dark, I know which way to go. Because yeah. the God that I serve leads me. Yeah. Yeah. Third thing that you may want to vow, you need to accept and keep in mind the fact that one day you will be judged by the gospel. 